Hi everyone, and welcome to the technical workshop for Hello Future Hackathon 2024. Hi, I'm Brendan, and I'm a developer relations engineer for Hedera. Here's a bit about me. Believe it or not, my first job was a zookeeper at the Singapore Zoo. After that, I spent over a decade as a Web2 software engineer, and since then, I've been doing Web3 developer relations. You can connect with me on Twitter at BGYZ, on YouTube at DoDevRel, and find my writing at blog.bgyz.com. Here is what we're going to cover in this workshop. The first two are going to be a brief set of slides where we cover some misconceptions and then talk about Hedera services. Next, we'll switch to hands-on format where we'll start dealing with some code. I strongly encourage you to actually follow along with the workshops on your own computers. Um, and fret not. I've done some user testing already with a couple of people who are not developers, one technical writer and another university academic, and they both were able to complete the task despite not having any software engineering background. Let's start by dispelling some common misconceptions, and in the process I, ho I hope to convince you of Hedera's uniqueness as well. The first one is about energy consumption, and this is usually a reference to proof-of-work blockchains which genuinely do consume a vast amount of energy. So if you care about sustainability, climate change, etc., does that preclude developing Web3 applications? With Hedera, you don't. The University College of London conducted an independent study and they found that Hedera has the lowest energy consumption per transaction compared to any other blockchain. Not only is it the lowest, but it is the lowest by a huge margin. Next myth. You need to know Solidity. Learning a new programming language is really hard and a huge time commitment. With Hedera, however, for most functionality, there is no need to do that. There are SDKs available in Java, JavaScript, and Golang, and there are also beta SDKs available in other languages as well, Swift, Rust, and C++. Chances are you already know one of these languages, so you're in luck, because you already have the skills needed to code on Hedera. In fact, later on in the workshops, you'll see almost everything is in JavaScript. So, does not needing Solidity imply that it is not EVM compatible? In fact, since Hedera is not a layer 2 that uses Ethereum as layer 1, does it even qualify as being EVM? The answer to that is that Hedera is EVM compatible. You can use Solidity, compile it using SolC, deploy that EVM bytecode, and invoke transactions on deployed smart contracts using ABI over JSON RPC. And you can do all of that using EVM tools, libraries, and frameworks. So if you are already an EVM developer, you are in luck because you can continue using the workflow that you're familiar with. The reason behind all of this is that Hedera has a smart contract service, HSES, and under the hood that is running the Hyperledger based to implementation of EVM. The next myth is that blockchains are slow. When it comes to analyzing network performance, two figures matter the most, throughput and latency. Throughput in a blockchain is the number of transactions per second. Latency in a blockchain is the time taken for a transaction to be confirmed. And it is true that many blockchains have really, really poor stats on this front. But Hedera is truly in a league of its own on this front, especially for throughput. It can handle peaks of 10,000 transactions per second, and typically it averages about 1.5 to 2,000 per second. So think about that for a moment. I can't name any other blockchain whose capacity outstrips demand. How does it have such blazing fast performance though? The key is its own unique consensus algorithm. It doesn't use blocks of transactions and only have one chain of blocks in a single unique list. Instead, it uses a directed uh, acyclic graph plus some clever tricks, gossip about gossip, and virtual voting. And this is called the hash graph. It is unique to Hedera. Think about it like this. Blockchain consensus is like a road with a single lane, and hash graph consensus is like an expressway with an infinite number of parallel lines. Hang on. If Hedera uses hash graph, it's not a blockchain anymore, is it? Not quite, because Hedera has its cake and eats it too. While it uses DAG during consensus, after consensus it puts transactions into blocks and strings them into a blockchain. And you can read more about it in this blog post linked on the screen. 
Hopefully, I've dispelled several myths now and you're keen to develop on Hedera. But before we do, let's do a quick overview of the different services available on Hedera. The Hedera network exposes four services. Accounting transactions are fairly standard, so we'll go over the other three. Hedera Token Service, or HTS, allows you to create your own custom tokens easily. These tokens behave similar to ERC-20 fungible tokens or ERC-721 non-fungible tokens. But they're native to Hedera, so their behavior is baked in, and therefore no smart contracts are necessary for them to work. And here's a quote from someone building on Hedera using HTS. Hedera Consensus Service, or HCS, allows you to create your own PubSub messaging system easily. Think of AWS SQS or GCP PubSub, but a decentralized immutable version of it. This is also native to Hedera, so its behavior is baked in, and therefore no smart contracts are necessary for this to work. And here's a quote from someone building on Hedera using HCS. Hedera Smart Contract Service, or HSCS, allows you to easily deploy and interact with custom programs that execute on the blockchain. This works exactly the same way that it works on Ethereum at an EVM bytecode and JSON RPC level. This is not native to Hedera and is compatible with a whole number of EVM compatible tools. And here's a quote from someone building on Hedera using HSCS. All right. That's the end of my slides, so let's recap. We've covered some misconceptions and then had a brief overview of the Hedera services. Speaking of which, it is time to get hands-on with them. We'll be doing a very simple workshop that spends about 5-10 to 10 minutes demonstrating each of the services. Let's get cracking and build something.